Hi, everyone. Welcome to another puppy class live stream. My name is Tiff and I'm the behavior manager at the Humane Society of Western Montana. I'm also a certified professional dog trainer. Tonight's topic is one of the most important topics, puppy socialization. And I want to preface this by saying that unlike some of our really fun puppy classes, I mean, this one hopefully will be fun too, but in an informational kind of a way, this one isn't very hands-on. The reason for this is socialization happens out in the world, but I will show you a lot of videos from my shelter work, my personal puppy socializing experience. And I hope that with the information that I share with you and the resources that I show you, that you can form a solid and safe socialization plan for your puppies at home. As always, if you have any questions along the way, please enter them in the chat and I hope to answer them as we go. And at the, at the very end of our session today, I will also post an information card with email uh, addresses and other resources and ways that you can reach me and my behavior team. We're always happy to answer questions no matter where you got your puppy or dog from. So socialization is a huge topic. Uh, we can easily spend weeks talking about just socialization. Sorry if you hear the background noise. My puppy is chewing on something in her crate. My adult dog is rummaging around the house. Uh, hopefully you can hear me clearly. But socialization, huge topic. And in a nutshell, what socialization is, is teaching your pup, hmm, I'm gonna, gonna erase the word teaching. Socialization is the process of safely and positively exposing your puppy to a variety of things in the world. The goal of socialization is not to make your puppy more social. The goal of socialization is to teach your puppy to feel safe and comfortable in the world. Without socialization, you can experience, a puppy can grow up experiencing challenges like fear, anxiety, or even aggression. And of course, a lot of factors go into behavior and temperament, genetics, training, all of that, but socialization is critical. I also wanna be really clear about one thing. Um, you can socialize a dog at any age. For example, my four-year-old dog, I can bring him to my friend's house and socialize him, but it's not the same as the socialization period for a puppy. That, pray <laughs> go away. The socialization period is when a puppy is four to 16 weeks of age. Some experts even think that it cuts off at 12 weeks of age. But for, you know, for the, generally speaking, it's four to 16 weeks of age and every puppy is an individual. They're not gonna tell you when the window is closed, but if your puppy is 20 weeks of age or five months old, the socialization window is closed and whatever happened in the development of your puppy's brain through their socialization period, that is fixed. And it doesn't mean your puppy won't continue to grow and learn and change, but something about the socialization period and how their brains are wired to absorb information at that time have determined the limits of what all other social interactions will do to their, their behavior and their temperament. So I'm gonna talk about a few essential puppy socialization tips among many. So the first big tip is to envision the life that you want to have with your puppy when they are an adult. It is so easy to sit back right now and think, you know, life is pretty easy, life is pretty good, my puppy sleeps a lot and she's playful, she loves everything, very bitey, house training is a big concern. And we're, we're, you're trying to figure your puppy out, which is normal, but already be thinking about what do I wanna do with my puppy when she grows up? Do I wanna compete in sports? Do I have kids? Do I wanna bring my puppy to soccer matches? Um, am, am I a very social family? Am I gonna have people over for barbecues once COVID is all over and when my puppy has grown up? Do I backpack a lot? And will I want to backpack with my puppy once her joints are all developed and she is old enough to go on big hiking trips? Are you a skier? So all of these things, think about it. And whatever life you envision for your puppy as an adult, I want you to start exposing them to small versions of it now between eight to 16 weeks of age. So I'm gonna show you a little example here. I'm gonna do a little share screen and here we go. So I made, this is on my YouTube channel. I'm not gonna show you this whole video, but 
as an example, my puppy, Paya, and my dog, Bray, when he was a puppy, I did the exact same thing with him. Um, I, I am outdoorsy. I'm not very social in that I don't really hang out and go to parties. I don't really have people over. If you saw my house, you'd know why. So really, I focus on an outdoor lifestyle. And I do care that my dogs grow up to be OK with dogs and people, not inappropriate with them. Um, and trustworthy on the trail. I care about off-leash skills. So here are the, some of the things I exposed Paya to when she was eight to 16 weeks of age. Good girl. A good girl. Look at how brave you are. Yeah. Good girl. And I did so much more than that, but just a sampler, right? I want her to be okay with, let's say, a river crossing. And if she's not, it's okay. I mean, you can't force what a puppy's going to be when they grow up. But I, even though it's winter, I'm not throwing her into water to make her a water dog, right? But I went to places like Kelly Island, or, you know, there are so many rivers here. I wanted her to understand that water is a part of her life, even if it's just splashing through real quick as we get from one end of the trail to another. And I live by a very busy street in Missoula. So I want her to grow up not being afraid of cars or chasing cars. So that exposure to that busy traffic sound is very important to me. If I want her to grow up being okay with other dogs and appropriately neutral or social or maybe selective, I need to start exposing exposing her to appropriate adult dogs now. And I did that. So um, I'm going to talk about kind of what socialization leads you to at the end of today's little presentation. But that was just an example of I envisioned what I want to do with my puppy as an adult. And I found different ways of exposing her to those situations now. And I already have a really amazing question uh, from someone in the chat, which is how do you safely take your puppy out on socialization adventures when they're not fully vaccinated? That brings me to point number two. It is so important, even if your puppy is not fully vaccinated yet, to still socialize them and to talk to your vet about where and how you can safely do so. And I'm also going to give you some out of the box ideas. Um, I will be the first to admit that I actually took some risks. I'm not gonna tell you to bring your puppy to X, Y, and Z places that I went to. And you probably have seen puppies in places like Blue Mountain in the dog park, which I absolutely do not recommend. Um, diseases like parvo virus and distemper are actually very rare in our community. And I've lived in North Carolina where I would absolutely not be putting my puppy on the ground at all between that vaccination period if I was in North Carolina. But it doesn't, it also doesn't mean keep your puppy in your house and yard. That is one of the scariest things for me as a trainer to hear that people do with all the best of intentions, right? You can't socialize your puppy if they have parvovirus or if they pass from a horrible disease. But I am going to share this, um, uh, where is it? Let me close the screen, sorry. So here is something that's really interesting. This is a statement from the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior. And I'm just gonna scroll down here. And, da, 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 da. and we're not gonna read all of it together. I can absolutely send this to you. I'm actually gonna just pop this into the chat after I share this. But it says here that the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior believes that it should be the standard care for puppies to receive such socialization before they're fully vaccinated. The first three months are the period when sociability outweighs fear. This is the primary window for opportunity for puppy of opportunity for puppies to adapt. And they say here, um, 
Behavioral problems are the number one cause of relinquishment to shelters. Not true in Montana, but maybe for other parts of the country. Behavioral issues, not infectious diseases, are the number one cause of death for dogs under three years of age. Working in a shelter, I can suspect why that statement, um, why they would write a state or where that statement comes from. Um, a lot of behavior challenges, you might think like dogs jumping on people or chasing deer are really um, problem some behaviors, which they can be, but that's actually not, those are not behaviors that cause people to surrender their pets to the shelter. Behaviors like aggression towards people, aggression towards dogs, severe reactivity, and severe fear, which causes reactivity and aggression. Those are some primary behavior concerns that cause relinquishment. And socialization doesn't negate those behaviors from happening, but they highly reduce the chances of a puppy developing that way. So this is so important. And I am going to put it in the Facebook chat right here, but this doesn't answer the question, right? So how do you do it before your puppy is fully vaccinated? Well, this is where I want to be really careful about not telling you exactly where to go because I don't want to be the one responsible for your puppy getting sick. It is so important to follow the vaccination schedule laid out by your vet. Your vet should be talking to you about the type of lifestyle you have with your puppy. For example, I went to my vet and I said, hey, I'm taking my puppy places. I'm going there, there, and there. I'm avoiding the dog park, of course. I never go there. But I understand that my puppy is around things and I understand there are risks. Please tell me how I should vaccinate my puppy given this lifestyle that I'm telling you about. And my vet gave me a vaccination schedule. I probably vaccinated my puppy more than you're vaccinating your puppy. Um, I don't have her charts in front of me, but I gave her one vaccination every two to three weeks. Now, I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just telling you that this is an example of me having a conversation with my vet about my needs and expectations and us forming a plan together. I hope that your vet can do that for you. If you are highly concerned about your puppy being exposed to infectious diseases, here are some creative ways you can expose them out in the world. Um, you can bring a and do a share screen again. Lots of screen sharing today because visuals are always really helpful, right? So I'm gonna go back to this screen, close that. And where is my little tab? Nope. Sorry, the Zoom thing is blocking my view here. So here's an example. This is this little puppy in the middle is my dog Bray when he was six, week old, six weeks old as a breeder. So um, this doesn't fully show what she did, but she took a pen. She went to a, a place that there, where there were dogs, her friend's dogs. She put a tarp down. She put this pen on top of the tarp. And then she let her friend's well-vaccinated adult dogs greet these six-week-old puppies through the pen. So even before these puppies went home, they were meeting healthy adult dogs appropriately at the fence line. So I'm not telling you to take your puppy into a dog park. Don't do that. But think about the places where your puppy can simply see things go by, like bicycles or um, people walking their dogs on leash or kids playing. And you can, if you want to go extreme, set down a tarp, put a pen on it, stand in the pen with your puppy and do give your puppy treats as your puppy just observes the world. You can also put your puppy in a crate or on leash in your car or in your hatchback, drive to different places, open the door, just let them see what's going on. It's not the same as playing out in the world, but that's better than secluding your puppy to your home and to your yard through their 16 week mark. You can also put your puppy in a crate on a wagon. I've never seen someone do this, but if I lived in North Carolina, I would absolutely have done this. I would have conditioned my puppy to enjoy riding in a wagon. I would have just dragged that wagon everywhere and shown my puppy that cars are part of the world. Dogs are part of the world. People are part of the world. Sirens are part of the world. And my puppy would be in the world. So how I, regardless how you do it, you got to do it. And I hope those little tips give you some creative ideas of doing it and also talk to your vet. It is pretty dramatic to say that your puppy literally cannot be anywhere except your home and your yard. Um, and hopefully by talking to your vet and thinking about what exists around you, you can come up with some creative solutions. All right. Um, 
have another great question here. A family that enjoys kayaking with the doggos. I do too. Brave goes paddle boarding with me. I hope Haya will too when she's older. Um, what to do to expose her to water in the winter when swimming and kayaking isn't a thing? That's such a great question. I'll address it because I do hope my puppy grows up to love paddle boarding. I will say part of it is temperament and just how they grow up to be. For example, um, some dogs you can expose them to water positively as much as you want and they may still grow up to not like water and that's okay but you want to stack the odds in your favor which is fine here's something i did i filled my bathtub with like an inch of water warm water of course and i put my puppy in it a few times while feeding her treats just teaching her that her feet getting wet is okay um, i went to places near rivers that have natural little bodies of water and i found the areas where she would need to cross and get her paws wet but not go in because of course I don't want her getting cold and freezing um, and you saw in the video I showed you in the beginning happily walking through the water so I'll be the first to say she may not like water when she grows up even though I did these things but I at least stack the odds in my favor also think about the um, balance part of being on the water I am exposing my puppy to many unstable surfaces I actually have some this equipment and a wobble board, if you do agility, you know what a wobble board is. So I have some fitness equipment designed to um, create instability in safe ways. And she has been on fitness equipment and playground equipment and wobble boards for weeks now. So the, the feeling of being unstable is very familiar to her. And I'm hoping that will translate to a paddle board. Socialization, the best you can do, it doesn't guarantee, but I hope those little tips will help get you guys started on the right, on the right path. All right, so that was a quick dive into um, how you tackle the situation of wanting your puppy to be healthy and safe and follow vaccination protocol, but still take them out into the world. It's so important. Okay, third tip, exposure and socialization does not necessarily mean interaction. So 2020 has been a hard year, right? With COVID, I think socialization has been even harder than usual for many people. Because why would we even want to, why would we want to get our puppies close to people to socialize when we can't even get close to people to socialize? And this is where I wish it was called something different than socialization. Because the word socialization makes it sound like people need to pet your puppy and such. And it's not the case. Remember, it's about teaching them to feel comfortable with the world. They don't need to interact with every single thing. So here's a quick video clip on how I socialized Paya with people. I just need to say something real quick here. She is past 16 weeks now and she is fully vaccinated now. So a lot of people recognize this as Blue Mountain. I absolutely did not take her to Blue Mountain until she was completely vaccinated. All right, really short clip. And I actually don't have a lot of clips of me training out in the world with her because I only have so many hands and my partner was, it was so great that he was there for that one. Um, but just an example of, you know, whether it's on in my neighborhood or on a trail, when we see people and dogs, I don't say, hey, can my puppy come up to you? Can you pet her? Can you touch her ears? Can you touch her paws? That's not how socialization works. And in fact, if your puppy starts off just a little bit fearful, Doing it like that can actually cause more harm than good. And I'm going to tell you why later. But all my puppy needs to learn is that there are people in the world. So she has seen literally hundreds of, not hundreds, maybe like 200 people from eight to 16 weeks of age. But that was just from, you know, driving to the parking lot somewhere, walking in the neighborhood. And I absolutely did not have people pet her, but she feels safe around people because she just knows they're there. They walk around, she sees them. And it's not like at 16 weeks of age when she's vaccinated, I take her out into the world and she's overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, this is so different than my yard. There are people everywhere and it's scary. So even just going somewhere where your puppy sees things can be enough exposure. Um, dogs, really important for your puppy to 
um, well, if it is important for you that your puppy grows up to be a socially appropriate dog, they need to see as many dogs as possible in appropriate ways. Even if your puppy lives with a dog, I have a great dog at home, it's not enough. Think about raising a kid and imagine you have grandparents at home. And for the first five years of your kid's life from birth to five years of age, the only people they met is the grandparents. And then you bring them to New York City. That's going to be really overwhelming for that kid. So your puppy needs to understand there are other dogs in the world. Dogs are in other situations and it is okay. It's normal. It's safe. So that was the third point. Exposure does not necessarily mean let your puppy meet, though when you can safely facilitate it, that's great too. It just means let your puppy see and understand it's a normal part of every day. All right. So the fourth tip is the quality of your exposure is so important. Socialization is such a tricky topic. I, how do I word this? You can't, there's no such thing as over socialization. There is such a thing as improper socialization. So here's a common, um, here's a common train of thought. And if not now, then certainly years ago. Let's say, okay, I have a new puppy. I wanna socialize her with people. I'm gonna throw a puppy party. I'm gonna have people come over. Everyone meets a new puppy. Everyone pets the puppy. Um, everyone gives the puppy treats. And great, puppy has met so many people. So many people have pet her. Or, okay, let's socialize my puppy with dogs. Let's bring my puppy to daycare. Let's bring my puppy to the dog park. Um, and boom, 20 dogs meet my puppy, socialized. That's not how it works. If your puppy is happy and showing um, comfortable body language through that experience, then excellent. That is great socialization. Um, but if your puppy was overwhelmed or scared or doing a lot of the ducking or evasive during that experience, you might actually do more harm than good. Flooding your puppy with stimuli is not the same as socializing. That would be like, um, let's say, uh, oh, let's say you're afraid of spiders. And I just said, all right, great. Let's just socialize you with spiders. We're just going to put you in a room with spiders and I'm going to have you hold 10 spiders and boom, socialized. And then probably your fear of spiders is going to get worse and your trust in me is going to go to zero, right? So it's a little fear and socialization a little different, but I hope my point is coming across. The quality of that exposure is very important. So to illustrate this, I'm going to share a video with you of my adult dog playing with my puppy. And I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna preface this by saying that even though they interact great, in this clip, they are not interacting well. So let me show you. All right, bud. Whoa. Good girl. Good. Okay, so what you saw there was my adult dog, Bray, was playing extremely roughly with my puppy. He was doing a lot of neck biting. He didn't hurt her, but he was constantly on top. He was rolling her down. And actually, if I showed you more in this clip, you're going to see that they actually went back to playing. Oh, do they? Mm, let's see. Do they go back to playing? Oh, uh, okay. I guess I just started feeding them, which is the right thing for me to do. Good job, Tiff. But um, after I stopped filming, they did go back to playing. And in fact, they love playing with each other. So even though um, my puppy, she's very confident, she loved it, I still, I don't let them play right now. Because if Paya grows up playing like this, and she's a confident kind of really rowdy dog, um, what she might grow up to do is behave that way towards other dogs. And that's gonna cause some fights in the future. So that's, I'm just not gonna let that happen. You saw in my first video clip that she met other adult dogs in the world incredibly appropriately. Like she sniffed, she chased them a bit, um, she moves on and that's great. But with my dog at home, they both love to play but they just escalate. Like I bite you, you bite me, I chase you, you chase me. Ah! And that's not the social skills I want her to learn. If she was a fearful puppy and a dog like this did this to her, 
This could cause fear issues with dogs moving forward. So imagine putting your puppy in a dog park and your puppy being bombarded by dogs, maybe rolled a bit, maybe the owner laughs and says, my dog's friendly, oh, she'll learn, right? Yes, your puppy will learn. Your puppy will learn that being body slammed and rolled by dogs is something that happens. And they're either gonna grow up to do that to other puppies, or they're gonna grow up with some mild or severe fear or reactivity issues with other dogs. So the exposure, the quality of the exposure is so important. It's not enough to just throw them in to a world with people and dogs. You need to have people interact with your puppy in an appropriate way, or honestly, just move past them when find healthy vaccinated adult dogs for your puppy to mingle appropriately with. We actually have a puppy matchmaker program for that that I'll talk about at the end. So quality of exposure is important. Okay, fifth point, socialization is not, mm, socialization is not the be all end all in that you can socialize to the best of your ability, right? I'm a professional trainer. I did so much. I can show you my spreadsheet. I might show you my spreadsheet. Um, socialization is so important, but it does not determine your puppy's future. Um, puppies, you might think that they are a ball of clay and they can be molded in many different ways, but they are not. Um, they are moldable to a degree. So I'm going to illustrate this by showing you a little thing that I'm just going to do like this. Okay. So let's say this is a meter, one to 10. And on one, this is fear, anxiety, aggression. Like, wow, I am really afraid of the thing. Like, I'm afraid of the person. I'm afraid of the dog. Five is neutral. People are all right. I don't really care about people. They exist. 10 is overexcited and obnoxious. I just use the word obnoxious, but like, wow, I love people. I want to say hi to every person ever, right? So one to 10. And this isn't just for socialization. Think about this for just one thing. Dogs, people cars, deer, whatever it is. Okay. So the first thing that affects your puppy is genetics and this you cannot change. So let's say for the sake of example, that you got, um, you, you went to a ranch, you, and cause they had some puppies, they had some border collie puppies. You can't touch the mom or dad. They're growling at you because they're ranch dogs, right? I'm not saying all ranch dogs are like this. I'm just painting a fake picture. But let's say mom and dad are not good with strangers. You meet the litter of puppies. They are eight weeks old. They are huddled in the back of a stable. They see you. They run away. They're fearful puppies. And you think, it's okay. It's just because they grew up on this ranch. I'm going to show them the world. But because of the genetics of the parents and the early social and the genetics of these puppies because of the parents, this is the window that these border collie puppies have. Let's say, right? So no matter how much you train or socialize these puppies, they will never become the super hyper social dog. Border collies are not bred to be that way. And these border collies certainly were not bred to be that way. So you take this puppy home, and this is the glass ceiling. You may not know it, but this is what it is. So now this is what socialization does. Let's say you take this puppy home, the scared border collie puppy. Of course, it warms up to you. It becomes a normal, bitey, hyper border collie puppy within days in your care. Maybe hides when your friends come over, whatever, normal, right? Let's say eight to 16 weeks of age, you keep your puppy in your home in your yard because you don't want to take your puppy out because you're worried about diseases. And 16 weeks of age, you go out into the world. Well, that socialization window cut this down to here. This is gone. This opportunity is gone. No matter how much you train or socialize your pup, that puppy, it will never become more social with people than this. And at worst, let's say a traumatic experience happened with a person or they literally never met anyone outside of your home for those, um, the socialization period, you're gonna have fear issues, you're gonna have reactivity issues. You may, you may have aggression issues. So here's another example. Let's say you um, got I'm stereotyping, <laughs> I'm breed stereotyping so heavily. You got um, a golden retriever puppy, you met the parents, the mom and dad just jumped in your lap, classic goldens, you got a puppy. This is your window for let's say sociability with humans. 
right? Even if you lock this puppy in a closet for the socialization period, it still ends up here. It still doesn't end up fearful with people. It still ends up like, oh, okay, some people are scary. I'm selective with some people, but I love people because genetics, genetics determine this. And if you took that super social puppy and you socialized that you're gonna get this, right? So this is a very crude example. It's, it's oversimplification, but think about your puppy um, and think about who they are, right? Because you can only socialize them and train them within the confines of who they already are. And I, and both my examples are horrible. In both my examples, I said like, you met the parents and everything. And I work in a shelter. Um, we get our shelter puppies. We send them into foster care. They socialize with the foster family's adult dogs. They often have cats and kids. Paya is a, so a shelter puppy. She came super social and confident, um, was raised in an amazing foster family with three dogs and horses and cats and our foster families are amazing but we can tell when a puppy is going to be like a little a little fearful or resource guarding or very social and that's why our shelter staff are very committed to helping you when no matter what puppy you adopt from us but that little chart was an example of how um, tip number five is socialization and training happens within the parameters set by your puppy's genetics and it's important to understand that all right, so I have a great question here, which is um, after I showed the video of my dog playing really rough with my puppy, someone said that their dogs play that way, but generally de-escalate themse by themselves. Is there a point at which I allow it or is it always something to correct and deflect? Great question. Um, there, uh, that, I can talk an hour about that. That's such a good question. The short answer is if your dogs are good at self-regulating and what you see largely is appropriate, it's probably fine to let it go on. If you're feeling a little concerned, just gently interrupt them and give them a little break. Like what I kind of skipped through was I was giving them a break. Um, without giving you the novel of my dogs, both my dogs are high arousal. So Bray's very well trained, um, but he, because of his breed and his nature, he just goes up and up and up and up. So he is a great role model in that he is often very neutral and calm around her, but if I let him go on, he's just gonna go crazy. So if I had a different adult dog, I probably could let my puppy just exist with him more. So if what's happening in your home is fine, likely it's fine. Send us some clips, we will review them for free. I'll put an email at the end. Okay, tip number six. And this is not so much a tip more so than um, I just want to make sure I address this. Um, if you have a puppy that's a little fearful, you need to be socializing in a specific way. If your puppy is largely like a throw myself at the world confident puppy, believe it or not, you have a lot more leeway in your socialization. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It's still important. However, um, with the fearful puppies, you need, to, you need to do a lot more work. So we're here to help you with that. So for fearful puppies, I'm just gonna go on screen share here, or let me find the right thing. Da, da, da. So many files pulled up because I was ready to share with you. Huh. Sorry guys, oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do a screen share. Nope, that's not. Here we go. Okay. So this is our puppies, um, puppy matchmaker program. And if you want this resource, all you need to do is go on our website, myhswm.org. And I'm going to put this at the end too, and click on training and behavior. And right at the top of that page, you're going to see the forms to fill out. This takes roughly a, an hour and we're not going to go through all of it right now. But the great thing about this is this is free, first of all. And in this, like today I'm talking for 30 to 40 minutes. This is self-led and you're gonna get all the information on what is socialization, socialization and vaccinations. How do you do it? And this is focused on dog-dog interactions. But here in the resources section and the resources are spread throughout the course, you have all of these body language videos that you can access at any point. So I'm not gonna go through, um, all the things, but I do want to show you that with fearful puppies, you need to let them go at their own pace. 
if you just put a fearful puppy in with an eight month old playful dog and it knocks your puppy around, it's gonna exacerbate your puppy's fear. It's not gonna make them more social with other dogs. So I'm just gonna show you a quick clip of this. And Meg, one of our awesome certified dog trainers is working with Henry, this um, puppy that's just a little fearful. And you're gonna see, she does not try to pet him. And instead she lets him interact at his own pace. She offers treats. And you watch Henry in this one. He does a great job too. Okay, I narrate. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let it go. There you go. Okay, so this video is accessible to you for free. If you, oops, sorry. If you um, just fill out that quick form and I'll send you this entire course. But one thing about Henry is to the average observer, he doesn't look like a fearful puppy. He's not cowering, he's not shaking, but notice his tail is low. Let me find a good clip. I mean, that's a, his tail doesn't come up. See that tail, see how low it is? So when people see puppies, they wanna to touch them, right? And a lot of people are not trained to see subtle body language. So really, if you have a slightly fearful puppy or a very fearful puppy, one of the most important things you need to do is read up on subtle body language in dogs. And I can provide you a link to that too. And you should feel comfortable telling people, please don't pet my puppy. Instead, encourage them to toss your puppy treats or do the thing that I showed you earlier and just walk your puppy by people without letting them touch them at all. And what this is gonna do is gonna build your puppy's confidence. It might sound like you need to socialize your puppy, fearful puppy by having more people touch them, but that's not, again, that's not how socialization works because everything I talked about, right? The, the quality of the exposure matters more than the quantity. So if your puppy is already afraid and you flood them with the thing that they're afraid of, they're gonna grow up to be more afraid of it. And it could potentially lead to exacerbated fear, anxiety, or aggression issues down the line. But we are here to help no matter, I mean, if you have a puppy that's tiny or if you have a puppy that's just past their socialization period, Dogs, you know, I know I maybe sound a little pessimistic at the end here, but I'm actually really optimistic because you're all here and you're observing this information and dogs are very versatile at the end of the day. Let me show you a clip of an extremely fearful puppy. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna mute that poor puppy. Look at her shaking, right? There's absolutely nothing going on. No one's forcing her to do anything. Um, no one's trying to pet her. There are no dogs around. It's just me filming and it's just her owner. But she, this thing is terrified. She doesn't even have a tail, but you can see her shaking. This is a puppy mill dog. So the, she, no matter how much this person socializes her puppy, this puppy will always be fearful but it doesn't mean that this puppy will grow up to be aggressive or anything like that. It doesn't mean that this puppy is gonna grow up having a poor quality of life. This puppy is also eight months old, by the way. So it's not, she's not really a puppy within the socialization period, but there is a lot that this dog can do if the right steps are taken. And there is a lot that could have been done previously, not by the owner because um, this dog is a rescue, but had the, this puppy not been in a puppy mill, but instead been in a loving home that raised a litter of puppies and exposed them to different things, maybe this dog wouldn't have grown up to be quite so fearful, right? I mean, she will, this dog would never, like genetically would never have been here. She's here. She could have been here, right? So let me pull up this last little resource to share with you. I don't, I don't know if it's sharing. Sorry guys, the screen share thing is the hardest for me. All right, I'm going to share this. 
All right, as always, we're happy to help. Whether it's puppy related or socialization related or whatever, we have a behavior program that helps our shelter pets and community pets. So if you have any questions, please email us at behavior at myhswm.org. Um, every Wednesday at six o'clock through the winter, we're gonna be ho hosting these kinds of series. Um, well, I'll just let it do this. And um, every Thursday at six o'clock, we have a behavior spotlight. This is focused more on general behavior and it's accessible for adult dogs, but certainly for puppies too. I am presenting tomorrow's topic uh, at six o'clock. The topic is how to teach your dog to fetch. So I hope to see you guys there. It's gonna be way more hands-on involving um, like doing things with your dogs and stuff. And um, as always, we have so many free resources for our community because we exist to help pets and their people. But if you would like to make a donation, every cent that you donate to us will go towards the continuation of these programs and the care of our shelter pets. And that's all I have for today. Um, if you have friends with puppies, please share this with them because it's so important. And like I said, we're always here to help. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a great evening.